to this live session on control statements. Hope you are all good and doing well with your AMCAT preparation. Most of you might be sure, might be well aware of uh, AMCAT exam, but all those who are not aware of AMCAT, let me tell you. AMCAT is a test where most of the IT recruiters check for those students who clear this test. So AMCAT test clearing is important for the students and this AMCAT test includes uh, many other uh, topics like reasoning, aptitude and English as well as computer programming. So computer programming is as important as other subjects. So we are here to help you out or to help you score good in AMCAT test. So this session will be dealing about control statement which comes from one basics of programming topic and we have many other topics in uh, basic uh, in uh, computer programming course and uh, the basics of programming is one topic and the other is advanced programming and we have uh, data structures also and also the oops concepts so you should be well aware or you should be thorough in all these topics so that you can clear amcat test with a good score so today's session is on control statements which is one basic topic and let me remind you that basics of programming is important because 40 percent of the questions in amcat are based on basics of programming so we have chosen one topic from basics of programming which is control statement so let's get started let me share the screen with you so control statements now in this session we are going to deal with control state different uh, uh, how to use control statements and how they are implemented and the different types of control statements which implement in different ways and then analyze the code to answer our questions that come in AMCAT. So let's move on. Now what do you uh, understand by this picture? The program execution. What do you understand by this picture? The picture clearly says that someone is trying to climb up and generally when we climb up the ladder we go step by step so that is what sequential process is so same in program execution the program is set of instructions which execute in sequence without a sequential order you cannot execute a program and get the right answer so sequential flow of instruction execution is what a program will finally give us the result with now let us see another scenario program execution can be in a different way now what does this picture mean to you or what do you understand by this picture this picture clearly says that you are or someone is trying to control a person and their actions so we are trying to make or do something uh, of our wish and then finally doing the remaining instruction execution so we are trying to control some in, something and then follow the sequential instruction execution or follow the rest of the uh, actions to be done. So control statements help in such type of program execution which controls the set of instructions or controls the sequential flow of instruction in our program. So let's see what are these control statements and how do we control the sequential flow of instruction execution. There are different types. Now one control statements is classified into two and one such type is conditional statements. Now what is this conditional statement? The name itself says that there will be some condition. Based on the condition you are trying to put some task and then you are trying to do otherwise no. So it is used for controlling the flow of execution of a program. Now there is another type that is loop statements. What does this loop statement mean? It is, it is used to repeat some action for number of times. So are we not controlling the uh, execution? Yes, for both the uh, types we are trying to control the execution but how do they differ from each other is what we will see in our next few minutes. So moving on, how these control statements actually work or how do these conditional statements actually work. There are different types of conditional statements to control the flow of execution that is if, 
Eiffel's and Eiffel's ladder. Now, coming to the first type that is if, it is a conditional statement. Now, with the keyword if and the expression followed by it. Now, what does this expression mean to you? Expression always tells us about a condition. What condition? What type of condition? Condition always is telling us some relation. Relation between two objects or two different types of data. It can be two or more. So, expression here means a condition. The name conditional statement will aptly fix here. So, if the condition or whatever expression that we write is true always whenever we say condition condition always gives us in either it results in either true or false so there can be only two possibilities and this block or this statements that we have mentioned statement a and statement b will be executed only when the condition is true so if statement or if block will be executed if the expression results in true. Let us see an example. Let us see an example which illustrates this. If conditional statement. Let A holds a value 10 and B holds a value 30. Now, is A less than B is the question. What does this mean? We are trying to find out the relation between A and B whether less or or just whether less that's it so what can we answer for this only if as true or false now we know that a value holds 10 and b 30 so it definitely is a less than b true so how do we implement it in a programming language is the conditional statement if then a value is 10 10 less than 30 that is true so the statement under the if will be executed. So this we call as we call this as if block which executes only if the expression is true. That is what it means. Now this is another type of conditional statement that is if else where we are trying to find out or we are trying to execute subset of statements or a block of statements if the condition is true and we are trying to set off uh, we are trying to uh, execute another set of statements if the condition is false so how do we do that is with the conditional statement if else the expression is true we are going to execute the true block and if the expression is false it goes automatically to the else block without uh, without executing true block so it skips the true block and goes to the else block to execute the else block which is called as false block of code so when when this will be used when we want to perform a task from two so the true block will execute only if the expression if is true otherwise it executes the false block so let's see an example which illustrates better and this is mainly used for taking one task among two. Now let's see an example. Let's check if A is holding 10 and B is holding 20. Then we are checking the relation. Are they equal? Are they equal? No. So how do we implement it in programming language? We are checking the equality relation between A and B. And then finally giving us finally it gives us an answer in s or no so a and b 10 and 20 are they equal equality operator gives us a false so it goes to the else block whenever the condition results in false and executes the statements in the else block that gives us a no then let's look at another scenario if else ladder now in the previous cases for if and if else we have used an expression and tried in if we have tried to execute the block of statements if the expression is true and if it is false it will just skip to the remaining set of instruction flow now in the case of 
uh, if else we have used a set of uh, block code which will execute if the expression is true and if the expression is false we have tried to execute another set of code now in the if else we are trying to execute an expression or a code or a set of statements under an expression which is in if now if the expression is true we are executing statement a now if the expression here is false it will skip to the else block immediately after if so in the else we are again checking for another condition so this is else if where we are checking for another condition which results in either true or false again so if it is true it is going to execute the true block if it is false it is going to execute the else block now expression 3 would be verified and then if it is true it is going to execute the uh, statement c and if the expression here is false again so it will come to the else block and execute the statement d so we are finally arriving to execute one statement suppose suppose here at this particular situation where expression 2 is satisfied then b would be executed statements in the if would be executed and once the statements in this if block executes it directly the control directly comes out and executes the remaining set of instructions so the flow will go on as it is so you are controlling these instruction uh, execution by having a conditional statement in between so when can we use this 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 if else ladder will be used mostly when we try to execute a task or when we try to do some task with multiple verifications so let's see with an example so it is used to do one task by verifying multiple conditions so let's see with an example given an example that uh, given the sides of a triangle where a holds uh, where one side a holds 10 another side b holds 10 and another side c holds 20 now if this is the measurement of a side of a triangle then find which type of triangle it is whether it is equilateral or isosceles or scalene how do we identify we know that equilateral triangle will have all the sides equal now isosceles triangle will have uh, at least two any of the two sides would be equal and for scalene all the sides would be different now how do you answer this now we have the data in a, with us and then what would be the answer it would be because two sides a and b are equal we can say this is a isosceles triangle now now here what are we trying to do we are trying to have a multiple verification now in this scenario we have checked whether a and b are equal and then if both are equal then we have a uh, assume or we have come to the conclusion that it is an isosceles triangle but for programming uh, uh, concept how do we implement we have to undergo multiple checks to identify whether it is equilateral or isosceles or scalene so in the first expression if what are we trying to do here the equality operation is checked between a and b a and b are equal and this is a logical operator which results in true only if the condition in the left hand side and the condition in the right hand side are true so is a equal to b true yes true and it will check whether a equal to c is also resulting true is a what is our a value 10 and c value is 20 so 10 is equals to 20 it is a false so what will happen if either one condition is false it will return or it will result in false so it does not execute the statements in the if block these statement would not be executed so it will come to the else block where it is going to have another check where we are going to check whether it is an isosceles triangle for an isosceles triangle the property is whether a two if any two sides of a triangle are equal so that is what is happening here we are trying to check the equality between a b if this is now here this is true and the operator that is used here is an or operator so or operator will always go for if any of the condition to the right or left side is true it will execute true or it will result in true so because a equals to b is true it need not check for other 
conditions. Why? Because there is an OR operator used. OR operator will always go with if one condition is true that would execute as true and even though the other conditions are false that is a is b is equals to c is false and a is equals to c is also false if even though these two are false because a is equals to 2 and a is equals to b and there is an or operator here it results in true so it executes this statement inside the else if block where it prints isosceles triangle so this is our answer now if suppose the values of a b c are three different values then even this condition would be false and it will end up with a false and then it will execute the else block which is scalene triangle so we need in some cases we need multiple verification in those uh, situations we go for if else ladder now so far we have seen if if else and if else ladder where we have tried to uh, see with an example about how does it work and how do they uh, try to execute set of statements only if the condition is true so we are trying to control the sequential flow of execution using if if else and if else ladder now moving on to the other type that is loop control statements what are these loop control statements as we have seen in the earlier side slide that uh, loop statements are trying to control the statements again how by some repetition there is some repetition of a particular action of how many ever times you want and that it will be implemented with three different types of looping statements that is for while and do while now how do you try to repeat some set of statements according to your wish using this for while and do while is what we are going to see next so with for how are we trying to implement or trying to repeat some set of instructions now here the for syntax goes like the keyword for with three expressions this is the expression one where or uh, expression which tells initialization what is initialization Sorry. initialization is the initial value where you are starting your repetition like taking an example uh, skipping if you have a skipping rope at home and if you are a workout freaks then you would skip or how many rounds would you go it would be around for 50 or 100 or 200 it depends so always whenever you are trying to repeat some action for n number of times so always you start the count with 1 or 50 or 100 and you go on further till how many counts or how many times you want to repeat so how many rounds you want to go for so in program execution also you take these loops in order to repeat some set of instruction in order to repeat some action or repeat the execution of some statements uh, for how many other times you want so for any repetition there must be an initial value so this is we can say it as the initial value okay the initial value would be executed once and then it verifies with the condition condition would be what it specify what do, would it specify it specify the range how much how many times or uh, how many rounds you would want to cal or you would want to repeat to execute these statements or uh, you would finally give a an answer for it so you are trying to repeat the statements one and two for required number of times that is range of uh, your uh, estimation and then go on repeating and then finally uh, next question three would rather specify increment or decrement which tries to count the number of times you are executing this block that is there will be an initial value start value or starting count and then whether the count is in the range we will see so 
what is the range it is again specified by you whether you want to repeat this set of statements for 50 times 100 times or more it depends so whatever range you specify whether this count is in the range it will, it will check and then for every time you repeat the statement execution it increments the count if the first time you are taking a, a statement 1 and statement 2 the count would be 1 and next time when you repeat the count would be 2 and next time when you repeat count would be 3 so this count is taken or considered with this another expression as increment or decrement based on your initial value and the condition so these statements or these expressions are separated with a semicolon and the syntax goes with initialization first then the condition then increment or decrement and how many ever times you want to repeat that is mentioned or that is calculated with the condition that you give here and then it executes for number of times you want and finally the loop ends when will it end when the condition is false when you arrive at a point where the condition doesn't satisfy that means your count doesn't fit in the range of value you have given then it results false when the condition is false it stops the loop and executes the remaining set of instruction execution so let us see how do this for loop be implemented with an example the example say there is a question print sum of first 10 natural numbers first 10 natural numbers we know the count how many natural numbers it is 10 so how do we implement it taking a value say uh, some value sum because we are trying to find out the sum of 1 to 10 numbers so we start the count from 1 so we start the count from 1 1 and then this initialization step would execute only once for the loop and the condition verification will be going on executed for how many other times you want until the range is satisfying so i value starts with that means we have taken a variable initial variable say i store holding a value 1 and we are trying to check the condition until the condi until the i value reaches 10 we are trying to repeat this statement and whenever the condition is true it executes the statement inside the for loop and once the statement is executed it repeats the loop but it will not execute this first expression initialization is only for the first time and for the next repetition we call that as an iteration also so for the next iteration we check for the condition and that condition i value will be changed with the increment operator i plus the which is a post increment operator which increments i with one with uh, adding a one to it and that i value becomes two then it goes on this increment operation will go on and the condition check will be repeatedly verified and once the condition becomes false that means when i value is greater than 10 then the condition fails so when it is fails it comes out of the fur and executes the statement so when will it fail when i reaches 11 so till that time i value for 1, 2, 3, it is going to add up into the sum variable and finally once the loop is finished you are executing or you are executing a, a statement, print statement by printing the sum value which would store sum of first 10 natural numbers. Now moving on there can be another uh, loop statement through which we can control the sequential flow and that would be using while now while condition also does what it checks for the condition and then if the condition is true it is going to execute the statements 
A and B. If the condition is failed, it comes out of the loop. How many times A and B statements are executed? It executes until the condition is failed. So how much ever range you put in, that many times your loop will execute. So this is what uh, says that it executes block of code repeatedly until the condition is false. Now, have you, what difference have you seen between for and while? For is also doing the same. It is going to repeat an action for n number of times. And for uh, when comes to while, it also do, does the same. But there is a difference. Let's see with an example. Let us take an example, so printing sum of individual digits of a number. Now, taking a number, say 2, 3, 4, 5, and initializing it to a variable number, we are trying to find out the individual digits sum that means we have to take individual digits of this uh, number 5 plus 4 plus 3 and plus 2 so finally the sum we would want to print it how do we implement it taking the condition or taking we are trying to repeat some action what is that action finding the sum sum of individual digits so we have to take a loop whenever there is a repetition of something and how do we how are we implementing taking a number taking the number 2345 and checking whether it is not equals to 0 if it is not equals to 0 that means the condition here refers to true and we are trying to put the reminder which comes out when divided by 10 into a variable reminder and then trying to whenever a number is added with 10 the reminder would be the last digit that is 5 so 5 would be added to the sum of individual digits sum of digits so 5 would be added initially the value of sum is 0 and then now it will be 0 plus 5 that would be 5 and then we are changing the number now next time when it iterates the number must not be 2 3 4 5 so it must be changed to 2 3 4 so we are doing the division operation and taking the quotient into number and trying to implement or trying to repeat the loop with 234 which is not equals to 0 and enters and we are trying to find out the reminder of uh, the number divided by 10 and it would be 4 reminder would be 4 and then 5 previously some digit sum of digits would be 5 and now it will be 5 plus 4 that is 9 and so on so this repetition goes on for how many times until all the digits are finished when all the digits are finished the reminders of these uh, numbers will be taken and added and finally when the condition is failed it comes out of the loop and it prints the sum of digits which holds the sum of uh, the individual digits of this number so when what how can you uh, spot out the difference between for and while now for can be best used when we know the count in the previous example we know the count that we have to add the digits or we have to add the numbers from 1 to 10 so we can put the counter we can put the uh, we can set the counter value and the condition as 1 to 10 whereas here for finding the sum of individual digits individual digits of a number we do not know how many digits it has now here in this case we have taken four digit there can be five digits six digit and so on so for any number if you want to find out the uh, individual digits sum then we could rather uh, uh, prefer while loop because this is best suited when we don't know the count and try to repeat some action so that is the difference then let's move on now there is another scenario that is nested loop what is this nested loop we are trying to implement a loop inside another loop there is a while loop inside another loop so when will this loop execute this is considered as outer loop or whenever the outer condition the outer loop condition is satisfied you are entering into this outer loop statements where it executes all the statements how many times it executes all the statements until this condition is true and when this condition is false it just 
skips and comes out of the statement when when the condition is false so when it is true it is going to execute all these statements now when there is another loop inside it so whenever the outer condition is true your inner condition is also if it is true you are trying to execute these statements inside the inner loop so this loop statements would be executed when the inner condition is true so when will this loop finish for every outer condition verification your inner loop will repeat how many times until you your condition is satisfying if the condition is false it comes out of the inner loop and executes the remaining set of statements so outer loop statements will be executed only if inner loop is finished its iteration or finished its repetition when the condition inner condition is false so this is how nested loop looks like now let's see an example which illustrates this uh, uh, nested loop now taking an example of printing some pattern like in the you can observe that there is a pattern for the first row there is a column value 1 and for the second row there are two column values 1 and 2 for the third row there are three column values 1 2 and 3 and for the fourth row column values are 1 2 3 4 and for fifth it is five column values so we can assume that for every row say this is the row 1 for every row if this is the column 1 column 1 value if row is 1 and column value is 1 you are trying to print 1 if row is 2 and column value is Uh, one it is going to print one and for row uh, for row two and column value two it is going to print the value two so how do we implement it in a program how can you print this pattern using a programming language is yes. now the initial value say a is equals to one is taken and then one is being checked for five times so there is a loop for loop inside while loop that is inner loop is executed how many times until outer loop is satisfied whenever outer loop is false once the outer loop is false then there won't be any execution for the inner loop as well so whenever outer condition is true you are entering into the loop and whenever the inner condition is true or when inner condition is false you are just coming out of this inner loop and trying to execute the statements outside the loop and once these statements execution are done you are again trying to repeat the outer loop so now what is actually happening here there is a a value starting with 1 and you are repeating how many times until a value is less than or equals to 5 that means 5 times so let us consider this as row a is the row value and b is the column value so for every row value row a1 you are trying to execute column values how many times until a times so if row is 1 your column value must be printed once if row is 2 if a is 2 that means your column values must be printed two times if row is 3 that means a is 3 your column values b values must be printed three times if a is 3 your column values your inner loop must be printed three times so this goes on until your outer loop is false when it is false you are going to come out of the out of the loop and executes the remaining set of instructions so b again starts with 1 and until if it is a is less than 1 sorry uh, now here b value is starting value is 1 and a is let me clear this now initially a is starting with 1 and then your counter in the for loop inner loop is again it ends up at 1 and your initial value of b is also 1 1 is equals to 1 so the condition is true so it prints 1 and then what are we trying to do we are trying to increment 
a value so a becomes 2 and then it prints a new line so control goes to the new line and then it comes out and a becomes 2 when a becomes 2 2 is less than 5 yes so it enters into the loop b initial value starts with 1 now now a value becomes 2 so when when will this outer inner loop stops its execution 1 is less than 2 yes so it prints another one and then b now what is the value of b since b is incremented so next when the next iteration goes into the uh, for loop your b value is 2 there is no 1 in b b value becomes 2 after this increment operation so 2 is less than or equals to 2 yes so it enters again and prints a uh, 2 after 1 and then then the loop still repeats and b value becomes 3 now 3 is less than 2 no 3 is equals to 2 no so condition fails and it comes out of the fur and goes uh, for incrementing a value which becomes 3 now and then prints a new line so cursor goes to the next line so this is how you are trying to implement a particular pattern using nested if so there can be situations where you are supposed to use for loop there can be situations where you are supposed to use while loop there can be situations where you are supposed to use nested loop for best implementation and for best understanding let us move on having understood with different types of loop statements let us move on to some of the previous years question papers from taken from AMCAT and try to analyze how the questions are framed and how would you answer. So having known with all the control statements and the different uh, uh, types of control statements and how do they implement in, a, uh, in the best way possible is what we have seen now. So let's see some questions. So this is a question which was uh, given the previous question papers from AMCAT. So here what is it uh, uh, actually asking us to do is what will be the output of the program. So what is the program actually doing? There is again two loops. We have two loops that is inner while and outer while loop. So how many times inner loop will execute? Let us see in this way. How many times outer loop will be executed? Now i value is initialized to 0 and 0 is less than 2. So how many iterations would it possibly take the outer loop? The outer loop would possibly take 2 iterations 0 and 1. Now when i becomes 2, 2 less than 2 the condition fails so it cannot iterate this loop at all. So now when i, now initially i is 0 it enters. Now here the inner loop, how many times inner loop would execute? Now there is a condition that is j initial value is 0 and what is the condition how many times this loop would repeat until j value is reaching 3 into i times. What is i? 0. So 3 into 0 is 0. So 0 j value is also 0. 0 is equals to 0 condition true. So what it would it print the j value? j value is 0. So it would print 0 and a blank space. There would be a blank space. And then what are we trying to do? We are trying to implement, we are trying to implement uh, a statement that is println which prints nothing but only it moves to the next line and then increments the i value. So you are trying to increment the i value and come back to the loop, outer loop, i less than 2. So then uh, then i would be 1 and 1 less than 2 is the condition true yes so it enters and then j value again starts with 0 and it repeats how many times 3 into i times now what is the i value it is 1 so 3 into 1 is 3 so j while is supposed to repeat from starting value 0 to 3 into i times so 0 will be printed and then a space in between a space next and then j is incremented by 3 so 3 less than what is the value here 3 into 1 that is 3 3 is less than 3 no 3 is equals to 3 yes so condition true 
and it executes the statement that is j value which is 3 now and prints a blank space and then comes back j becomes j is incremented by 3 again so it becomes 6 6 is less than 3 condition fails so it comes out of the while and executes a new line and then increments the i value which would rather become 2 i value would become 2 and then 2 less than 2 condition fails so it comes out of the loop so what would be the output of the program it would be 0 in first line and 0 3 in the next line make sure that you understand the nested loop so that how many times you are trying to repeat and with what values with what in even though you start with an initial value differently the, based on the increment operation j plus equals to 3 your uh, count may differ so make sure you try to read the code properly and try to answer them so let's see another question now here there is a statement or there is if else ladder and also there is another type of usage of if else statement that is see the condition 1 is executed if it is condition 1 is if it is true you are trying to execute some set of statements this is called the if block or we can say true block and in the true block you are again having a conditional statement so we call this as nested if or nested uh, conditional statement so now if the condition one is true you are entering into the if block and you are checking for another condition two if this is also true you are trying to execute statement a now can you tell me when would you execute statement c when would you ex execute statement c probably c the condition one if it is true you are entering into the loop you are enter sorry you are entering into the if block and then you are checking for the condition true should condition true be uh, condition two should be an yes or no should be a yes or no it should be a no so then it goes to the else block and in the else block should this condition 3 be yes or no it should be no and then you can go to the else the last false block statement where you can execute statement c so when can you execute the statement c when condition 1 is true and condition true 2 is false and condition 3 must also be false then you can execute statement c now when can you execute statement e now here you need not go for condition 2 and 3 because if condition 1 is false it does it won't go into the if block so it comes though so to execute statement e your condition 1 must be false and your condition 4 must also be false so that you can go to the last false block to execute statement e so there can be questions framed uh, with this type of with this type saying that what uh, conditions would be true to get statement b executed or what uh, what would be the conditions uh, verification for executing statement c so any such type of questions will be framed so you have to be very clear with how we are actually going from one condition verification to another so let's move on to another type of question say this is a question which contains a loop and loop value starts with a a less than 10 10.0 and the loop re repeats with a statement that is a into a and the multiplied value the product is stored in a and with that product value it is again repeated with the condition check now what is the question asked assuming a is positive for what value of a will this code result in an infinite loop so a we know that with the data given we have known that a is positive now what value should a be that is positive value should a be so that the code result in an infinite loop 
how will it go to the infinite loop that is the condition infinite loop is what what do you mean by infinite loop is the condition never fails if the condition if the condition never fails it goes to the infinite loop so when can you see the condition or when can you see infinite loop only when even though you do the product of a and a your answer would be always less than or your a value must always be less than 10 so when can it be possible it can be possible with 0 or 1 when a value is 0 0 into 0 would be 0 so each time you iterate each time the while loop iterates it iterates with 0 less than 10 would be always 0 and then it goes to an infinite loop that would be one case and the other case is if the a value is 1 if the a value is 1 1 less than 10 and 1 into 1 will always be 1 and then it iterates for infinite times now what is the options given check always the options the options given are a less than 1 a less than square root of 10 and a is greater than square root of 10 or if a is equals to 0 there can be two possibilities that is less than 1.0 or 0 now what would be your answer so that you would uh, do it right now see the question properly it is asked that a is a positive value you cannot take a equals to 0 why because 0 is neither positive nor negative so we assume that a is less than 1.0 which would again result into an infinite loop which would again result into an infinite loop so this is how you analyze the question and the way it is and the way the question is framed to answer the right answer let's look at another question now here the question says that to print sum of all perfect squares where the value of the squares go from 0 to 50 that means your squares if you are doing uh, squares of a number it should reach the squares of those numbers would should reach up till 50 if it reaches 50 then you can stop so what would rather what would you do rather now if it is uh, starting with uh, 1 then 1 square would and then add up the squares then 2 2 square and then add up with next value that is 3 3 square so you go on and whenever your value if 3 square is 9 here it is 4 and whenever you get a square value which is less than 50 or till it is 50 you are going to stop the uh, addition of these squares of numbers so that is what the question mean first understand the question and then try to analyze the code what is it given it is shown as i is initialized to one and then what is actually asked is do you think this program have an error does this program have an error if yes which statement will you modify to correct it now see the code properly step by step to analyze whether this code is right to have this uh, executed that is you are trying to do all the squares of numbers and once you reach to a square of number where it is less than 50 then you are supposed to stop so are we doing uh, in the right way where can be there are there statement 1 is mentioned and statement 2 is mentioned and statement 3 is mentioned and statement 4 is mentioned and you are you have to spot the uh, statement which you can modify to get the right answer what statement would you modify try to analyze try to see see the first statement itself is what is telling us to modify that is see a i is initialized to 1 whereas a is not having any value and then you are trying to check for the condition a less than 50 now will this condition be actually executed no why because there is no start value at all so that it takes the loop further or you can uh, go into the loop and execute the statements so the statement one would be modified or would be initialized to what value again say if the question was asked as if statement one would be modified with what value you would uh, actually get 
ये वैल्यू और विथ वॉट वैल्यू यू वुड टेक ये सो दैट योर एग्जीक्यूशन गिवस अस द राइट आंसर वॉट वैल्यू शुड बी इन ये सो दैट यू विल गेट द राइट आंसर इज सी ऑलवेज वॉट वॉट इज आज एक्चुअली जीरो जीरो टू फिफ्टी you have to take or the squares of numbers have to go from 0 to 50 so taking from the first initial value say 1 so 1 square adding it with 2 square then adding it with or sorry 2 square adding it with 4 uh, uh, square sorry the uh, say uh, the value 4 then the perfect square the next perfect square would be 16 and then 36 and then it would go on so the perfect squares must be added and it should reach up till 50 so the perfect squares would be 2 square 4 square and 2 uh, square and then 4 uh, 3 square and then 4 square and so on so it should end up till 49 so that would be 7 square and then it would give us the result so when it is 7 square it would be 49 which is less than 50 and when you go to 8 square it will become greater than 50 so that would be uh, resulting in the condition failed that means the condition here would be failed if a value goes the square of the a value goes beyond 50 so the squares of a or whatever square of value that we do should reach up till less than 50 so this is how you analyze so how do we actually take the a value with you can take the a value with 1 so that the answer would be right or your uh, statement or whatever the particular question would be changed would give us the uh, answer these are few questions which we have taken from the previous years uh, amcat question papers so i hope you have uh, understood the different topics or different uh, types of control statements using which uh, we have tried to control the sequence or sequential flow of execution that is using conditional statements and control statements and we have tried to analyze some questions also so that it would be easier for you to practice in the sessions to come i hope you have understood and for more uh, practice you can go through our videos and check for the question papers for practice and even the live you can participate in the live sessions for more uh, analyzing of different other topics or as well so uh, hoping that this would be beneficial to you for uh, scoring good in your amcat thank you I am Akshita Kashyapur from Belgaum. I am Nishita. I am from Andhra Pradesh. I am Aravind. I am coming from Salem. My name is Smita. I am from Bangalore. My name is Saurabh Singh. I am from Delhi. My name is Sukriti. I completed my engineering from Mobile Madhya Pradesh. I am Megha Vikuma from Bangalore. Sonam Singh from Hyderabad. I am from Tirunal Valley. And I am from Arora Singh Engineering College. Welcome to Talent Sprint. I'm Sylvia and I'm here to share your daily dose on job skills. In this video, we will learn how to speak in a jam session. Now, just a minute is a great tool to help improve your managing, convincing and your overall general speaking skills. So, by the end of this video, you would have learned how jam can actually aid in improving three skills for you. One, your ability to organize your thought flow. Two, your ability to apply logic you know and sound convincing three your general speaking skills now most